So here's our loop of wire passing through the magnetic field from the previous video. This end of the loop has a force acting down on it. This end of the loop has a force acting up on it. So therefore, the torque about the center point here is two times the distance from the center point to the conductors times the force on the conductors times cosine of theta. So if we plot that, we see that the torque here, which is on the vertical axis, as a function of the angle theta going from minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees, looks like this. So we get a positive torque in the angle range minus 90 to 90, and a negative torque at all other angles. And we can see here at 90 degrees that we have zero torque. And in fact, the, that's where this top conductor here is vertical above the center point, and the bottom part is below. The force here is acting up, the force here is acting down, so we're at equilibrium. And we can see that that's a stable equilibrium. If we start the motor a little bit off from those positions, it's going to want to come back to that position. This is another equilibrium, and you can see why it's unstable. You can think about that. So this is not a very good motor. Uh, if we send a constant current through this conductor, then we get a very different torque, in fact, changing sign as a function of the angle of the motor. So one thing we could do is we could switch the direction of the current through the motor when we hit 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees. So if we plot the torque then, we see it looks like this. Uh, we basically, since we're switching the direction of the current, then we switch the direction of the torque, and that part that was negative here now becomes positive. So we get positive torque or non-negative torque at all angles of the motor. Again, though, it's still not a very good motor because the torque changes a lot as a function of the angle. And in fact, it still becomes zero at two different points. So now imagine instead of having that one loop through the magnetic field, we had three loops. And those three loops were offset from each other by 120 degrees. And each of them had their current switched at the right angle. Then we'd get something that looks like this. Here's the contribution from each loop. So we get three figures that look like this, but offset by 120 degrees. And if we add them all up to get the total torque, then we get a torque that looks like this. And you can see now that torque is not quite constant, but it's much more constant as a function of angle. So we're getting something that starts to look like a motor. This leftover variation in the torque as a function of angle is called torque ripple. So one way to get a motor out of current carrying loops is to set them offset from each other by some angle and to have enough of them so that when you add them all up, you get a nearly constant torque. There's still a couple of problems with this, though. One is that there's insufficient torque, perhaps. So one way to increase the torque is to increase the current flowing through the loop. Another way is to increase the magnetic field, use stronger magnets. And we saw that from Lorentz's force law. But another way is to increase the length of the loop through the magnetic field. And this is what's used to increase the torque. Instead of just sending a single loop through the field like that, we send a coil through the field. And we wrap around lots of times. And then every time the current passes through the field, we get an increase in the amount of torque that's created on this coil. So we turn this single loop into a coil to increase the torque. A second problem we have to address is how to switch the current. And the solution there for brushed permanent magnet motors is called a commutator and a set of brushes. So very simply, if you think about these are the inputs to the motor. So maybe you have a positive voltage here and a negative voltage there or ground. And these are connected to brushes. And they rotate or they make connection with a commutator. Okay. And you can see there's a gap here. So these two segments are not electrically connected. And then this commutator segment is attached to one end of the loop, coils around, and comes back and attaches to this end. So now what happens is if I put a voltage difference across these uh, two brushes here, it's going to cause the motor to start to rotate. And when the, rotate, when the motor gets to the right angle, we're going to switch the contacts between these brushes that are sliding over 
these segments so that we get this switch in the current that it happens right here and right here. Okay. So this is simplified picture for just one coil and two segments. So this, these two segments together is called the commutator. And each of these is called a commutator segment. So it's an actual mechanical switching. As we get to the right angle, we switch from this brush sliding over this commutator segment to this commutator segment. So if we take a look at a picture of a very simple motor, and we never have just two commutator segments. You always have at least three. Then here's a very simple motor. So again, here's our two inputs here. They're coming up to these brushes here, and the brushes are usually made of some kind of soft metal like a carbon graphite. And those brushes are sliding over those commutator segments. In this simple motor, we have three commutator segments, and each of them is attached to the end of two different coils. So for example, this commutator segment here has a coil running from that down to this commutator segment, as well as a coil running from here over to this commutator segment. And you can see as this motor rotates, different commutator segments come in and out of contact with the two brushes, thereby energizing that coil or de-energizing it. So in this example here, this coil right here is attached to a commutator segment and another commutator segment making contact with the same brush. So therefore, there's no voltage across it and this coil is not energized. On the other hand, this coil is energized because it's making contact with this commutator segment and therefore this brush and this commutator segment, and therefore that brush. So these two coils are energized, creating torque to drive the motor. Currently, this coil is doing nothing. And that's a simple model of how a motor works. Most motors have more commutator segments and more brushes, and thereby get a more constant torque as a function of the angle. 